Where do you see Tulane winning this game? What are the what is the key? What do they need to really focus on to to, to take this across the finish line? I mean, are you concerned at all either? Looking at where they rank defensively, they're giving up 234 rushing yards a game. Is is what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, so, yeah. I, was I mean, yeah. <laughs> you just listen. We love the da- look. We love the Darian Mensa show. That's more exciting to watch, I guess. But if you can hand the ball to Makai in the first half and let him take over and end this game in a half, you do it. Yep. And then you get yep. you get Arnold Barnes, Cornish, all those guys some some carries in the second half, and let's go. Welcome to Wave Watch. I am the Patty V. We've got Mr. Harkness himself back with us. The other, the, not the other Patty, the the one and only Pat um, that is on this podcast, Mr. Tulane himself. Um, we've also got Dave Rainey. So we're back uh, breaking down some more Tulane football. We appreciate you guys for tuning in so far. Um, it's been a great, it's been a great, uh, great season thus far. I mean, hey, Tulane's rolling right now, just coming off a win against USF. Winning a lot bigger than a lot of people expected. Um, we're going to dive into that game a little bit. We're going to dive into some UAB stuff. And as you guys know, uh, we'll probably go wherever, wherever the, uh, the wind takes us. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in here. Um, I'm going to pass it to Dave because it feels natural to do that. But I will leave this tonight because I have a lot more topics. Dave, how are we feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. You mentioned that this was a lot uh, or that we thought this game was going to be a lot closer than it was the USF game. Uh, and it was not at all, which makes me feel really good. And it, it puts me not that I, not that my hopes were down on this team or, you know, anything like that, but I feel like we're back a little bit. We're back to that level of excitement. We were after the first week or so uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for all challengers now. Oh yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. What about you, Harkness? Jump in. Yeah, it was great. It was a dominant game. It was it was great to see Menza and this whole entire team play all four quarters. That's what we've been kind of asking for uh, for these past couple games, and and everything was just clicking on all on all cylinders. I mean, the run game was going. Uh, Menza was hitting his targets. Uh, the O line looked like one of the best offensive lines in college football. I mean, you can tell all five of these guys have starting experience and are one of the most experienced offensive lines in college football. Uh, Dante Fleming, huge game, seven receptions with 128 yards and a touchdown, mm-hmm. I believe. Massive game. It's great to see him. Uh, get his, that was his first career, first career two-lane touchdown, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so it's great to see that. And then the defense, six sacks, five was by defensive lineman to Gerard Henderson, the sophomore. Uh, it was good to see him, you know, take that spot for uh, Aiden Huntington, who's been banged up, I believe. And then uh, hopefully he only had 20 snaps. So let's see if he gets some, some more opportunities this week. Uh, but, yeah, it was, just, it was just great. Great to see all all three levels of the team just just killing it four quarters. Yeah. Shout, out to Dante, <laughs> shout out to Dante Fleming. I said last week on the pod that I wanted to see him have a big game, and he showed up for me. So shout out to yeah. him. Sure the heck did. So with that being said, I mean, is there one specific thing about this game that stuck out to you the most? Uh, whoever wants to take it first, like feel free to jump in here and tell me just the one thing that you're taking away from this game. Um, that the Pat kind of mentioned it, that the defense was able to put together four great quarters. We, we said before that every game, it seemed to be a half here, a half there. This was four great qu- quarters of defense. Um, they didn't let Byron Brown's mobility get to him at all. Like all the players we talked about that could have made an impact had zero impact. Uh, yeah, if that if that's the one thing I had to take away, it it, it was that they forced another turnover. Um, yeah, like just great defensive performance through four quarters. I love to see yeah, that. They only, they only had twenty six yards rushing, and they had what two hundred against Bama. So I mean, first. like. 206, yeah. So I mean that's 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 showing you right there. And, and Byron or Brian Brown, Byron Brown was not a factor at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had that one late drive at the half, but other than that, you know, he got hurt in the third quarter, but like he was not an issue at all yeah. during the game. And I, I'd have to say the defensive line. Uh, Matthew Fobbs White, he was generating a lot of pressure in the beginning, early in the game. 
he didn't get home. You know, he's a, I believe he's a sophomore. He, hopefully you start seeing him, you know, making that extra final, I guess, sack basically you could say, but he was getting a lot of pressure and then Gerard Henderson just, just stepping up. And then Pat Jenkins got another sack mm-hmm. and then Tyler Grubbs, he got in there too with a sack as well. I can't remember who the, had the other sack, but the D line for me. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Shout out to uh, Gerard Henderson to um, AAC defensive player of the week. Uh, yeah. Always big kudos there. Um, you guys both took the defense. That's easy, right? Like I, I could easily say that too, but I'll flip it on its head. I'll flip it on its head. I'm going Darian Mensa. You know, I guess at this point we expect these types of games out of him because he's shown that he can do that. I don't think any two lane team I'm, and the offense in general is kind of where I'm headed. I'm saying Mensa, but it's really the whole offense. I don't think any two lane team in the Willie Fritz era scored 45 points ever. So massive shout out to the offense to, to Mensa looking the part again. Um, really stepping up and showing out. I think Maddie and I kept looking at each other on the sidelines. There's a video on my Twitter where we was <laughs> like, what that. is going on? What, like, we were in shock. We're like, what the hell's going on? Just so excited to see the type of execution that you're seeing. Um, it's great to see. So, yeah, I'm going with that. I wrote, I made a note um, during the game. I put in the first half, Tulane's offense had 317 yards of total offense to USF's 148. And to be honest, I'm more shocked that USF had 148 because I don't know where that came from. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't remember 148 yards of offense from them no. the entire game. Uh, and then the other thing I wrote down, just to give a little more credit to the defense, was that they USF had their first drive that didn't end in a punt or turnover with 34 seconds left in the first half. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy, it's right? Insane. And another player to give a shout-out to, uh, Rashawn Pleasant, he's having a season right now. I think he's got a turnover. I think he's got four turnover, or he's got the interception, the fumble recovery, yeah. and yep. then uh, there's one other thing he did. Uh, I think he's like the only player to have done that. And I'm, I'm blanking on it. Somebody tweeted it out. I wish I had to say it. Kickoff, kickoff return. So, return. So, kickoff return. Uh, that's right. Against you. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Showing out. Yeah. Showing out. Uh, I really enjoyed watching Caleb Ransaw go up against Sean Atkins, and, and he was their number one wide receiver, their only wide receiver, the slot wide receiver, and Ransaw really, really showed up and yeah. uh, was able to shut him. I think he only had 26 yards receiving, I believe. Yeah, that's another great point because I remember coming into that game, I had heard a lot about him. Obviously, you heard about Brown's ability to scramble um, to make plays and stuff, but I had heard of their wide receiver a ton too. And I, candidly, like watching the game, I kept having to look for him. Like, who? where is he? Yeah. Like, I just wasn't seeing anybody step up and look the part on that offense at all. So, yeah, yeah, massive shout out to the defense. I think it's also yeah. worth mentioning that um, they did play almost the whole second half with a back with their backup quarterback because yeah. Byron Brown left early. But I said in the post game pod, I don't think it mattered one bit. No, this was this game was over halfway through the second quarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's if there's any other thoughts on the game. Obviously, I'd love to jump into them. Uh, you know. Tulane's playing backups halfway through the fourth quarter. Like, love to see a lot of guys getting in. It's that kind of game where, you know, there's not a lot to worry about. You can get some guys some playing time. Not a lot to talk about there, right? Um, yeah. I'll say this. Trey Cornish got his first touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was cool. I'm that was good to see. I had some thoughts that I had written down. I wanted to make sure to pull them up. Um, yeah, best game of the year. All three facets. It's less rushing yards today than against, against Bama. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Um, speaking to Summerall after the game, they kind of asked what his like what his strategy was defensively coming in against this team. And one thing he mentioned that really stuck out to me is they went all in against the run. They said, you know what, our defensive backs are gonna are gonna man up against these guys. We're just gonna out physical them. We're gonna out athleticism them, and we're just gonna beat them up. Um, so they really trusted the defensive back end to show up and show out, and they did. And they were able to get a lot of pressure with with the, the other guys um, and really stop the run. So. Uh, that was something, too, that I wanted to call out because I thought that was awesome. I, I, listen, I love aggressive defense. So the more we see that, if that's working, I'm all in. Yeah. Do you think it's a case of them just starting to get – was it a case of the opponent they were playing or are they just starting to get more comfortable in this defense? I think, I think they're just buying in. I think they're just they're just buying into it. And then plus, I mean, you have some late transfers in there, too, and I feel like finally everyone's just coming together as a unit. And just clicking, you know, right at the right time when conference play starts. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Uh, Summerall called that out as well. He had he said fifty three new guys, fifty three new guys, seven new starters. 
right? Yeah. So you get through four weeks, uh, you're finally starting to mesh a little bit more. That's something else he pointed out to why they're starting to get this to come together. He even candidly called the first three games kind of like the preseason. He's like, we got that out of the way. Um, and yeah. now now we're ready for some AAC football and we're ready to go. So, uh, yeah, I, listen, I hope it continues. I mean, that was your first big test and you blew it out of the water. So now coming into next week, you got UAB. A lot of things going on with UAB right now. We could probably just transfer into that. Um, yeah. First things first, we'll just start with the first topic of they just announced a new quarterback. So we can dive into that. What do you guys know about their new starting quarterback, Dave? You mentioned a few things earlier, just his name, maybe who he's related to. We can start with that. It's uh, Jalen Kitna, right? I believe is his name, son of John Kitna. We all know who John Kitna is. Lions, oh. great. Are we allowed to call him a giant Lions legend? Sure. Well, he played with the he was playing my Bengals, so I guess we call him a little bit of Bengals legend too. But for like yeah. two years. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there you old. go. There you go. Uh, he's originally a Florida commit. He played, or I don't know if he played at Florida. He was at Florida. Was released from Florida. You can do your research on that if you want to find out why and come to your own opinions. Um, but yeah, now he's at UAB. He's going to be the starter. This offense is only averaging. 17 points a game right now yeah so can't be any worse yeah <laughs> yeah he was he was a former three-star commit uh he was an 86 rating composite on uh 247 you know he, he's, he's like his dad he's like a pocket passer uh he has good mobility in the pocket not that great of a runner but he can definitely do it. i mean the guy's massive he's like 6'5 200 pounds uh he's got pretty good accuracy uh he's got a decent arm We'll, we'll see how uh, how he does. You know, I, I don't know if he's played um, any collegiate snaps, so we're gonna we're gonna see what you know what he what he's got on Saturday. Yeah, uh, definitely interested to see what happens there. Obviously, I I don't know a ton about him other than coming from Florida. The story of why he left Florida, uh, which we don't need to get into, uh, but I know about their offense. Uh, you know, I was, I was reading into their offense a little bit before we got in here. Not very good. I mean, middle of the pack, seventies and eighties across the board, right? One thing to call out, which could probably point to why they changed their quarterback, they were one of the worst teams in the nation for turnover differential. I mean, they're, yeah. I think they were 123 or something like that, or 127 out of 133 teams. Like, not real great yeah. there. So they're negative, negative six. Yeah. 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 So, and then I believe, um, I believe Zeno, Zeno had five interceptions. And then I believe they're averaging 204 passing and 176 rushing. Yeah, the, the, their run games where it's at Zeno, it's disappointing to see Zeno go down because he was a, originally a Bam or a Baylor Baylor commit and then came over to UAB. I, I thought he was going to be a lot better. He's 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 got an accurate ball. It's just he f- tries to force a lot of things. He threw, I believe, nine interceptions last year. Had twenty touchdowns. He had the highest completion percentage in the AAC last year, uh, but this year he's got eight hundred nineteen yards, six touchdowns, and five interceptions and ten sacks. So I mean, that kind of tells the story right there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we can get into the defense side of the ball. That'll probably come up with this next question. But where do you see Tulane winning this game? What are the what is the key? What do they need to really focus on to to, to take this across the finish line? I mean, are you concerned at all either? I mean, me personally, no. I mean, 17 point favorites for a reason. Right. Uh, looking at where they rank defensively. They're giving up. 234 rushing yards a game is, is what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, so, yeah. I, was gonna I call mean, <laughs> you just – listen, we love the – look, we love the Darian Mensa show. That's more exciting to watch, I guess. But if you can hand the ball to Makai in the first half and let him take over and end this game in a half, you do it. Yep. And then you get yep. you get Arnold Barnes, Cornish, all those guys, some, some carries in the second half, and let's go home. Like, yeah. Yeah, I believe they're third third worst in the AAC. You know, stopping the run. It's 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 not it's not good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, listen, I, I agree. You hand the ball to Kyle. You hand the ball to Trey Cornis. Let him get some stuff going. Hopefully, he's he's playing a lot of the game late here. Um, a lot of things going wrong for them. I mean, like I don't even know really what else to get into as far as their team goes. They're one and three. Their only win is against Alcorn State. It was the first game of the season, so kind of the one cupcake uh, on their schedule to kick things off. They haven't looked good through any of their games. I mean, you got their head coach uh, basically hated by the fans right now. Like a lot of lot of uh, adversity. Yeah. Is happening. it Trent Dilfer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's right. 
Yeah. They said something like we're not we're not Bama and then yeah. it's all, all hell broke loose after that. Yeah, Twitter but, Twitter's killing him, man. Like the fans oh, are basically yeah. asking for him to be fired. Some people are asking for them to disband the program again. Like there's just it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Looking more at their, their defense. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Pat. Um, I was just gonna say, yeah, they they've been running a lot of a three four defense, and and the reason why people have been running all over them is their linebackers. They've been inexperienced, and just the injury bug has kind of hit them. I believe they're getting back OC Brothers. Uh, he he's a stud linebacker. I believe he'll be back. He's got thirteen tackles on the year. Uh, but yeah, what were we gonna say, Dave? Just if you look at like their stats, their defensive stats, they're number sixteen in the nation against the pass yardage wise. But I, I feel like that's a little misleading because I just assume teams are just running it down their throats. Oh, yeah. Because, like, they're they're number one in the country as far as opponents' pass attempts per game. So it's got to like just be teams are just yeah, – yeah, teams are just running it down their throat. And by, by relation to that, they're just a really good pass defense because they're not even getting tested. Look, like, I don't – I hate, like, just brushing an opponent off like this, but it, it less – it's just a lucky weekend, you know. I mean, any given Saturday, right? But yeah, right, unless it's just a bad day for Tulane, it should be a, a cakewalk. Yeah, I, I might be a little concerned because we don't have any tape on Jalen Kitna, so I don't know exactly how we're gonna do that. I, I, I'm because sh- they they do a lot of shotgun and, and pistol formations. I'm, I'm sure they'll probably do a lot of the shotgun. I think they'll take away the pistol now with Zeno gone, but um. I mean, they got they got two good running backs. Lee Beebe Jr. Uh, he's got 269 yards rushing, averages almost five. He's got three touchdowns. They got Isaiah Rogers, a big physical back, 162 yards, averaging four. Uh, and their wide receivers, Cam Shanks, I believe he's a freshman. Uh, he's a five eight, small, shifty guy. I don't know if they're gonna have Ransall or maybe Bailey try to line up on him. Uh, he leads the team with 163 yards and a touchdown. And then Amari Thomas is probably their best receiver. He's a big physical guy. 14 catches, 122 yards, and I believe two touchdowns. And then a decent tight end in Terrell McDonald as well. Yeah. So well, even in the scenario that you don't have enough film on Kitna and they are able to put up points, it comes down to them and then Darian Mensa versus this defense. And I'm taking yeah. Darian Mensa every oh, single for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that brings up the next question. I mean, listen, I think we're all kind of in agreement that Tulane has a great shot to win this game, right? The question is, that's a big spread. Do they cover the spread? Yeah, what is, what is Tulane it against the spread this year? 17. Uh, Tulane 17. is 3-1 against the spread. Yeah. <clears throat> I think they cover. I think they cover 17. Uh, I think they cover. Yeah. They, they, they just won by 31 <laughs> against yeah. the better opponent. I think they cover. Yeah, I think I think Trent Dilfer is kind of losing the fan, obviously losing the fan base, and probably the locker room as well. And then I, I don't think his players are bought in, so I think yeah, they'll let's get it might be a blowout. Cool. This is not betting advice, but apparently we think they're going to cover. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah, college I mean, football seventeen is not even that big. You see, you see forties across the board sometimes. <laughs> if Tulane does cover, how are you feeling next week? Are we are we playoff bound? A lot of mocks are, are, you know, projecting Tulane to still be in the mix and, and potentially one of the one of the favorites. Listen, when you asked me earlier this earlier in the pod how I'm feeling, I, I'm excited not only because of how Tulane looks, they're starting to get some things break their way as far as the help they need. Um, Navy has Air Force this week. Navy still Navy's got a tough schedule the rest of the way, and that's their competition really for the AAC. Now you gotta you gotta start hoping things didn't break their way with UNLV the way we thought they might. UNLV yeah. looked even better <laughs> than they did yeah. with the other guy. I forgot so, that backup was uh, um, Haj. Was it Haj Malik? That's the guy I was talking about, like the hidden gem in the off season that Tulane was interested in uh, as a transfer coming out of coming out. Oh, of, really? Yeah, like Division Two. Like he came from low level, but apparently killed it down there. I was reading up on him. He's he's a pretty solid quarterback. They might. Yeah. We'll see how they right. continue. So you, you need a couple other things to break your way, but they're certainly more in it than I thought they would be after losing the Kansas State. Yeah. I mean, Isn't the a- Navy. Yeah. Sorry, go. No. I was going to say, and the AAC is definitely in sight now. AAC always in sight. Go ahead, Pat. Go ahead, Pat. 
Um, yeah, so Navy, Navy is what, 4-0 and right now? It's, and they play Navy right before they play Memphis, I believe. So if Navy stays undefeated, Memphis wins out. And then I don't know if you play another, what, 11-1 and Navy, and then, yeah, and they're still ranked. You beat them, you're going to need a little help, though. I mean, Boise, you're going to have to have Boise lose maybe two games, uh, UNLV. But I think that's the only teams above them right now. It's Boise State and UNLV. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Navy's got Notre Dame in two weeks, so <clears throat> yeah. If, no, if they can beat Notre Dame, then I and then they beat Navy. I think they have a legit chance. <clears throat> yeah, I don't that, know if Ashton is going to let Boise State lose the game. <laughs> Dude's a dog. Goodness, yeah, yeah. The is this a scenario where we're kind of pulling for Navy to just win until we play them? Because we were doing, we were kind of hoping with that for Memphis at the beginning of the year, so that you had a chance at a ranked opponent. If Navy's undefeated after Notre Dame, like at that point, Notre Dame is possibly a top 10 team. And if they upset a top 10 team and they're undefeated, Navy could come into Tulane ranked. Yeah. And then Tulane could have a win over a ranked opponent. That yeah. helps. Their think, offense looks good. Yeah. They do. It does. Um, I think you just let the cards lay where they lay. I think t- if Tulane continues to play the way they're playing, they've, they're getting eyes already. And they're only two and two, right? Yeah, two and two. Um, yeah, they're getting eyes already. I mean, you keep winning like you won against USF. You played two power five opponents very tough, and both those teams look okay right now. Um, we'll see. I think I think you got a good opportunity here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, cool. With that being said, any other thoughts on UAB? I got a, I got a couple other things we could talk about here, but um, yeah, I just want to toss out with their secondary. I believe their secondary, Colby Dempsey, he's probably their best guy. Uh, he's got eight tackles, pass deflection, and interception. He's probably going to be manning up on uh, Dante Fleming. Uh, and then Adrian Maddox, he was a former Walter Payton finalist uh, in the FCS last year, and the Walter Payton finalist is usually you know, the best player in the FCS. He was a, he's a finalist for that. He's playing uh, the nickel slash safety, so he'll be going up against Mario. And then uh, Cyrus Bryant. Uh, he's their strong safety. He's like a run supporting safety. He can, he can come up and lay a boom. He's got 29 tackles, leads the team. Um, and then there was something else I was going to mention too, and it slipped my mind. <clears throat> that will come back to me, but yeah. That's all right. Mario's going to put on a show. You heard it here first. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, you, Keith. I think this is finally going to be you, Keith's day. Because I believe Dempsey and, and Maddox and all them are so worried about Dante and uh, – Mario, I think Yul Keith is, is finally going to have his breakout game. Oh, yeah. That bodes well for some future things to come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just foreshadowing here a little bit. You guys will see eventually. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. I'll tell you. We'll tell you when we when we wrap up. Um, two other topics I wanted to talk about before we close this thing out. Is the Pac-12 calling again? Uh, Memphis is being linked to the Pac-12 again. Um, <laughs> there's more smoke. Supposedly, Tulane is not really necessarily in the in the running. At least, there's not a lot of smoke about that yet. What are your thoughts? Uh, are you still open to a Pac-12 situation? Um, if Memphis goes, are you upset if Tulane stays in the AAC? Just give me your thoughts on that situation. Go ahead, Pat. Um, it, it depends, like what the offer is. If it's a good enough offer and Memphis goes, then yeah, go. But if Memphis leaves and, and the Pac-12 commissioner lowballs you and you stay. I mean, you got to do what's best for your school. You got to do what's best for the kids, the athletes. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's going to suck because Memphis is probably the only comp, not the only, but they're one of the best competitions in the AAC. But like I said last time, the ACC is going to have a mass exodus of teams. Florida State is trying to get to the Big Ten. I know Virginia, North Carolina, Clemson. I think Clemson wants to go to the Big 12. North Carolina, Virginia, SEC. Uh, I'm not sure what Miami's trying to do. I think you might know that better. But there's going to be a mass exodus in the ACC. And then the ACC is just going to go back to the American or whatever is the best out of those groups and be like, hey, why don't you guys come over here? And then, I don't know, Just it's very interesting. You kind of got to see what Memphis does. And if the right offer is there, take it. If not, you kind of got to play it out. Yeah, I agree. You definitely don't take a low ball <laughs> offer from anybody. But my other, I guess the other side of the argument for me would be whatever path gets you into a power conference, that's the path I want to take. 
I, even if the ACC, my concern with the ACC is the the mass exodus. But if they can stay a power conference by just filling those voids with other teams, that's fine. At that point, I almost like don't really care what the level of competition is there. If you're a power conference, yeah. like as long as you have that classification and you have a better chance at the playoff, then I'm fine with going to the ACC. Yeah, so, if it's the Pac-12 Pac-4. that you go to, the Pac-12 would be fun. Like though, like if we're just looking at it from a fan perspective, I think the Pac-12 would be so much fun. I like yeah. the idea of the the late games and all of that, but what whatever gets you into a power conference, that's what I want to do. I don't care if it's the ACC. I don't care if it's the Pac-12. Just get me into a power conference. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think you're both, you're both spot on, right? It's going to matter what the, what the offer comes out to be. And I think too, uh, these are all rumors, right? Like nothing's really substantiated, but word on the street is if Tulane is being considered that their offer and Memphis's offer are going to be two different offers. So if they're then showing, Hey, Memphis, like we really want you, we're going to pay half of your exit fee or whatever it is. And Hey, Tulane, we're all going to pay 4 million. Good luck. You probably pass on that. Um, so yeah, I think I think the offer definitely matters. Yes, I want. I, I would hate nothing more than Tulane to stay in a fledgling AAC, unless there's other good teams coming in. But like, who the hell are you gonna pull in, right? Like, it's just yeah. at that point you're just in this low level conference, hoping you're just hoping. And if anybody knows me, I got a saying I like to live and die by: hope is not a strategy. You go find yourself a strategy, and you find your way to get into a better conference. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, some somebody is gonna want Tulane. If the ACC has their exodus, they're you have to imagine. They're like, what what group of five team are you coming? Are you gonna go get that's got a brighter future and a better, more recent past than Tulane? Like Memphis is the is like the answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And if if they're going Pac twelve or or maybe they go to ACC too, like. If the ACC was willing to take SMU, they're going to be willing to come get Tulane. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Like, I'm, I, I'm with you. If they end up staying in the AC, AAC, that, that hurts. Like, sure, you could have an easy path to winning it every year, but like, if you're not playing anybody, it's going to be tough for you to make yeah. the playoff, even if you win it. Yeah. It's yeah. like Liberty right now. Like, right. What the hell are they doing? <laughs> um, any other thoughts on this? I was just going to say, as long as they perform and just keep doing well, but then he kind of like shot that down when he said, I mean, you're not going to be playing anyone. So, I mean, I was just going to say is if they just keep kicking everyone in the ground and, and, and as long as you perform, someone's going to call. But then again, you just go back like Liberty. Who, they're not playing anyone. Yeah. But to, to that point, Liberty's problem is they're not scheduling anyone either. Like even their out yeah. of conference opponents are terrible, right? Like Tulane could still – schedule these, you know, I mean, they're scheduling Ole Miss, they're scheduling Kansas State, like they're still scheduling some tough teams. So if they continue to do that, like, yeah, there's a path. It's more I also, difficult. I also have to imagine that Tulane is a better market than Liberty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So like that, that weighs into all of that also. Like, I don't know. Yeah, New Orleans is great, great location. And then, and then I also heard, is it 2026? Is Tulane going to LSU? Is that a true story? No. No? So I think there's a guy, there's a Tulane fan. I can't remember his name. And I'm sorry because you you might watch this. I know we're in group chats together. He randomly changed Wikipedia and and it's going to play each other. (laughs) He's also a guy that like randomly tweets out fake news about stuff. And it's like, why is that funny to you? He got me though. <laughs> nope. LSU is still running from the smoke. It's cool. Oh, LSU is always yeah. going to run from that smoke. They don't want that smoke. It's cool. They gave they gave up on it as soon as Tulane got good. Coincidence? Yeah. I think not. Listen, <laughs> the, great, the great Nick Anderson told us he wanted LSU. Right? He was like, "I wanted LSU. Yeah. I wanted to play LSU." So that's right. Yeah, LSU never wanted the smoke. Uh, cool. There's only one other thing I really want to talk about, and it's it's not really related to either games. It's not really related to conference realignment. It's it's more clickbait. I'll be honest. I'll just start it with that. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be, but it's a topic that seems to come up from time to time, and it's about our head coach. He just came here, and there's already people on Twitter who, for whatever reason, like to connect him to other teams. And I got a little frustrated um, 
in the in the post game scrum or media or whatever you want to call it, and it wasn't because the person who said this was being malicious or anything like that. It was just like the the assumption of what they were saying was going to be met with like glee. There was a, a media member in the in the room who basically shared with some raw after the game, "Hey, your team, not the team he's coaching right now, your team just beat Ole Miss. How do you feel?" And some raw was just like, "What?" Like the the I was so proud of him because the quick, the quick like shutdown of it, of like I'm only worried about two lane football and just kind of like waved it off and it was almost like anger and disgust. I was like, thank you, thank you for just yeah. like completely dismissing that because I feel like there's just this assumption that he's here but he's looking there, right? Which is really annoying. I just had to get that off my chest. Y'all can give your thoughts, yeah. but yeah. go for it. No, well, I yeah, think, I mean, he, you go. You go yeah, ahead, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I was just gonna say he, he he's a linebacker in Kentucky, so I mean that's that's why everyone's saying that. Sure. And then he, you know he was getting previous offers or interest. Uh, I think it was like Mississippi State. And then you know he he's from um, Mississippi, right? Or no, Alabama. From Alabama. So I mean, he's got this pipeline of kids. So everyone's assuming this is going to be the next future SEC coach somewhere down south. I mean, I mean, I kind of think about it sometimes too. I worry about it because I think this just might be a rental for one year, two years, and then, I mean, that's way down the road. I hope that doesn't happen. But I mean, you kind of got to be honest with yourself. Like, if this guy does what we all think he's going to do, I mean, he's he's a smart guy. He's not just going to take any SEC offer. He's going to make sure he's in. He's going to put himself in the right position to succeed. But I mean, you got to have it on the back of your mind. But it's great that he said that, and you know, he's one hundred percent committed to this. Yeah. yeah, we you know we we can't act like we're not guilty of that. Also, though, Patty, we when he, the second he got hired, we were talking about, hey, this guy, if things go right, might only be here for two three years. But to our, we also said. If that happens, that means Tulane was extremely successful. Yeah. Like, if he's gone that fast, that means Tulane was extremely successful. Um, also, like, I understand where you're coming from, Pat, too, like where you think about it a lot. Because I do, too. Because, like, what what do we have in the past to be like, hey, this coach is going to stay? I've said in the past that if Willie left, I believe anybody will leave. Because I thought for sure he would be here. If anybody was going to be here for – you know, their career, it was going to be him. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think about it, but also I, I'm not surprised at all that he shot that down because of the way he left uh, Troy. Right. Cause he, like he did the whole thing where he told his players, like, don't you even think about entering the transfer pool before this bowl game? Cause you're not coming here. He's like, you know, he told all his coaches, he, they were staying. He is very much about the school he's at. Mm-hmm. And, um, having that after what we went through with the previous coach is a is a breath of fresh air. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think my only frustration, to be honest, because yes, I I think the same thing. If we're if I'm a realist, we had this conversation, Dave, Pat. I agree with you. Eventually, probably, and it's for the right reasons, right? Eventually, he's probably moving on, and it's for the right reasons, and it's good for Tulane. You hope that Tulane can continue to to leverage that and, and build on that success and bring in somebody else, and maybe they build a damn bubble one day. Who knows? Um, but I think what frustrated me is that it was like spoken in a way that it was just like assumed, yeah. and it's like as a local media member, I don't want to even put that in the ether in week four, right? Yeah, that also, was what frustrated me. I was like, come on. Also, time and place. Right. Like he just came off of a huge win. Right. Yeah. Like what what's the right. the point of that? But also, like we're talking about Tulane going to a power conference. Who's to say that if they go to the ACC or the Pac-12, they have a few years. If they if they make the if they go to a, a power conference in the next three years and they have at least one playoff appearance in between then. Mm-hmm. Who's to say he doesn't stick around? Like, listen, the SEC yeah. is a different beast, right? Yeah. If you get a if you get a call from one of these SEC teams, sure. But in the position they're in now, he could go to a lower Big Ten, like a lower power conference team. Whereas if you get to a power conference, why would you leave for just another power conference team? At that point, yeah. you're just worried about the big dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So who? Th- I'm not saying that that can't happen. 
I mean, the, the future is brighter for that to happen now than it's ever been. But the reality is history kind of speaks for itself and sure. maybe he moves on. But again, if it happens, that means Tulane was successful. And yeah, that's all we can ask for. <clears throat> cool. Uh, you want to do Lanya? Yeah. You want to close this thing out? Sure. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but sure. <laughs> uh, we do this this set for us. We do this every week, and I, I'm never prepared for it. <laughs> this kind of feels like a Who Up and Knows podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> all right. that's all right. That's okay. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to do some Land Yap in case you guys don't know what you do because you're two lane fans, which means you know about New Orleans. Land Yap means a little bit extra. Um, doesn't have to be football, it could be anything, just anything that's on your mind, anything you want to talk about. And that's what we do to close out these shows. Um, I Honestly, don't have anything crazy on my mind right now, um, but I guess I'll start because I'll give you guys a little bit of time. Um, kids are hard. That's what I'm going with. OK, that's what I'm going to start with. Kids are hard. And I'll tell you why. It's Halloween time. OK, <laughs> my daughter has changed what she wants to be for Halloween 15 or 20 times. And the problem with that is Halloween is in less than 30 days now. You got to get a costume. All right. And if I don't get a costume in the next two weeks, we ain't getting a costume. And you can't change. My daughter is always a mind changer, right? <laughs> what, what happens is we're going to get a costume. And then the day before, she's going to decide she wants to be something else. And then we're going to be SOL. Anyway, she wants to be a carrot. Uh, yeah. A carrot? That's it. A carrot. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where I thought this was going. All right. We went from Elsa to VeggieTales for Halloween, I guess. <laughs> I, no lie. She she wanted to be Anna. She wanted to be Anna like 15 times. And then she wanted to be, which she was Anna like two years ago. And then she wanted to be uh, Ghost Spider. And then, I don't know, just random other princesses. And then today she was like, I want to be Anna. And I'm like, cool. So we're locking that in. She's like, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. We're walking out to go to gymnastics. She's like, I kind of want to be a carrot. <laughs> what? Okay. That's, that's <laughs> great. My son, my, my son wants to be a very, you know how they have a million different types of Power Rangers? Yeah. Like whatever. Yeah. There's so many different ones. And he wants to be a very specific type of one. And I, I he doesn't understand that they just don't sell all of these different <laughs> kind of costumes. And he's been throwing fits. So I'm like, you can be a regular Power Ranger. He's like, no, this is the one I want. I'm like, I don't know how to break this news to you, but <laughs> I, I still might have my Red Ranger original first edition uh, <laughs> Power Ranger costume from a kid. <laughs> so if he wants to borrow that, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, yeah. you mentioned kids, so I'll I'll give you two because I'm gonna shout out <clears throat> my son, my oldest son. He'll be five in seven days, so or six days by the time this is up. So shout out to him. Happy birthday, little buddy. Uh, and secondly, I'm going to stick with what I always do here. We got ACC after dark this Saturday. Ooh. Miami travels to Cal. College game day going to Berkeley for the first time ever. So it'll be nighttime college game day, 930 central kickoff. So Nice. I, I got a buddy who's a big Cal mm -hmm. fan, so he's going to be excited to see that game too. Sorry. Is on the field. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, Marshawn Lynch is the guest picker, so, you know, must see TV. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Is he going to go out there in his old golf cart? And he drive has around to. If he, if he does it, that's a missed <laughs> opportunity, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess mine would be the Bengals finally got their first win. First mm -hmm. win. And then I don't have any kids, so I can't really touch on a kid's subject. Uh Oh, I guess uh, thoughts and prayers all to the people out in North Carolina right now. Yeah. The, whole, the hurricane. Yeah. yeah, great call. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, all the fl the floods from the, the dam and all of that. Yeah. Crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I I'm forgot all about that. Like seven who have those topics. That'll be saved for another podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Great, man. Yeah. Definitely thoughts and prayers to all them. Um, thoughts and not prayers, but thoughts or prayers. You know what? I'm a religious person. I believe in God. Prayers to all you guys out there. And if you don't uh, believe what I believe, that's okay. I still pray for you. Um, yeah, that's it. Until, until next time, you know, roll wave, all that good stuff. Roll wave.